That's major. We're not going to talk about major. We're going to actually talk about minor. This is uh, part two in learning the pentatonic shapes, minor based, going towards the headstock from our straight line. Everybody's favorite straight line. This is easy for us to grasp. We're basically looking at going up the strings on a single fret and how this relationship or this movement can be found mildly altered in a couple of the other pentatonic shapes and can help you visualize your starting points, help you see the caged shapes, the C shape, the A shape, the G, the E, and the D shapes, all very important shapes in tying, playing a proper scale or a proper melody over a chord, um, be it minor or major. Now, I'm not going to get too into theory. Um, I will do some theory stuff after this session of lessons. But for right now, we're really going to look at this straight line and how to alter it a little bit. The, the first lesson that we just finished looking at, we looked at what I called the Tetris shape. This straight line here on the fifth fret for A minor. If you have an A minor chord here and you see this bar right here that we're creating, it's a comfy spot, you know, and we can throw our very familiar pentatonic shape into that on the fifth and eighth frets and the fifth and seventh frets. We'll get to that shape. We're going this way from the straight line in these lessons right now. So we have done this shape, which is A on the E string at the fifth fret, and I'm using different fingering than what I taught in the previous lesson just to kind of get the shape down real quick. Um, in that lesson I spoke about trying to learn this shape with the first and third fingers and that was the Sean Lane way of working through these shapes to get some blazing speed going. So what I want you to do is first learn the shape before you really try to burn the shape, okay? I really want you to see the, the straight line and the Tetris piece. If you haven't watched that video, go back and click on the link that I'll put up here and make sure that you check out part one of this lesson. We're going to move from the Tetris shape to another straight line with our first modification to a straight line with just one note. Our nut is a straight line. You see that? If we wanted to play that nasty chord, that E for whatever minor thing, that would be all those. Just like A, if we did that in A, see, you get the same kind of gross feeling from that. It's not quite a chord that you want to use. It is officially a chord though. Um, but we play E minor here, O, two, two, O, O, O. And that gives us that familiar shape in E. We've been looking at A minor, so we're going to continue to look at A minor. And how this shape is also right here. We're going to start with this A to C move. And that would be your minor root to the minor third. We're going a whole step skipping that whole step step and then adding a half step so we're going from a to c just like here just like in this shape going from the e string to the a string these two notes fifth fret on the e to third fret on the a that gives you a minor third so the whole idea of moving these shapes is also feeling comfortable with at least knowing certain parts of the location of the root note in these shapes. So to see that root for this new shape we're going to talk about that has this straight line, we're going to envision our, our root. Oh, well, hello, Luca. Luca wants to teach you the shapes too. Hi, you want to say hi? Thanks for being here, Luca. Please subscribe. So we're going to look at 
the relationship between 5-8 and 0-3, oh, you hear it's the same. They're the same notes, a different timbre. It's a little more twangy here. It's a little thicker here as opposed to you hear that. So that is also repeated up here, 12 and 15. So what on the A string? You hear that? That's an octave up. So we're going to get to here, but first I want you to see this open A minor. So that shape, A minor shape, is the same as that without playing this, the high notes. It's a slightly different voicing, you know? Just you get a, a, a higher note there, but this is an A minor. You have an, a root on the next string up on the D string on the second fret, you have the fifth of the chord, the perfect fifth, and then you have the root again on the G string at the second fret. So this note and that note are an octave apart, just like this note and the 12th fret of the A string are an octave apart. Different timbre. You hear that? But they are the same notes and it's the same interval. It's the same distance from here to here as it is from, well, what is here to here. So let's fill in this straight line. And we're going to now, instead of calling it a Tetris piece, this bar is going to kind of do a snake. Like, I love video games, of course, right? So I think of Tetris and I think of the snake move. Remember the old snake game where you just kind of had this six blocks moving around? Well, if you picture our this is the first fret here, and then this is going to be open. That's our nut, okay? So this double line will be in A minor. I'm going to write it in lowercase because lowercase signifies in transcriptions a minor chord. So for right now, we're going to look at our A string here, and we're going to add this circle. I'm sorry, let's do it like I did before. We're going to add this square to show our root, and we'll add a big old circle right there in our pattern. So this is the beginning of our straight line. We have square around here. The next thing we're going to do is continue this straight line because A to D is found right here. A to D. There's A to C, fifth fret to third fret. Here's fifth fret to fifth fret. So open string to open string is the same thing. It's the same interval. It's the same distance in steps. So we have an open A, an open D. We also have an open G string in this pattern. Now, this is where this snake comes into play. If we're playing an A minor and we're just playing the five notes of the pentatonic, the B note is not there, and that's what would be this open string right here. That would be B, and this is your E. So we know we have E, okay, because A, C, D, E. There's our E. That's a fifth that we already spoke about. That's up one string over two frets that way, okay? Up one string over two frets that way gives you a minor third from these positions. When we get to the B string... It's not tuned to fourths anymore. This interval is not a fourth. We can't do that here between the G and B. See, that gives us a major third interval. That's two whole steps. So we want to skip this when we're learning this pattern. We want to move this to here. Okay? So, and, and we have repeated notes on the E and the E. So that gives us the fifth again here on the lowest string. But the key in hearing these shapes is to not end these shapes necessarily on that when you're learning the shapes. You want to end, if we start here on this A, and then go to the third fret of the E, and then open E, See, that's the five. You hear how the A, coming back up to the A, gives you the root. That's our root note. And then that's our root note. 
And then, obviously, we have the A up here on the E string again. So this pattern is now snaking this way. You see how we've taken yeah, purple pen, purple guitar, purple pick, purple pedal board. That's really hard to say all at once. You see how this, this pattern has now kind of gone in and like that. So we have Tetris and Snake next to each other. And that gives us, instead of for our, our bar, for our index finger and learning this, we go. And you hear how that, that's in that shape. Just like when you get to that C, there it is. See, we're skipping this B. It's a safe note when you're playing a scale, and it's a safe add-on, that B in A minor. It's actually really nice, that, that second, that major second. But for learning, strictly learning these patterns without adding any extraneous notes, in this case, we're, we're missing the minor sixth, and we're missing the major second from within this shape. That's what expands a chord. So a chord is a triad, three notes, A, C and E. So that's the basis of a triad. And we have our C here instead of here, so we can play them together. Pentatonic is going to be five. We're adding two notes to that. So we're adding the fourth and the seventh to our A minor. So we're essentially starting to find locational points for the modal spots as well. If you have followed any of my modal phone number lessons, this is kind of like a stepping stone into that. First get these pentatonic shapes if you're really new to this, but this snake move, this... So the whole shape would be open to three on the A, and then open to two on the D, open to two on the G, one to three on the B, and then open to three on the E string. So, I mean, how many times have you heard something like that? It's a great way to lead to a chord as you're playing the fifth, you're playing the minor seventh, and then the root of this pentatonic shape. So now you have your A minor shape falling into this Tetris line and this snake line. So the whole shape would go that B. You hear how that B, that is the fifth of E. That interval kind of sets your ear up for an E minor chord, which gives you that bar, but when you move to the A minor, and you move up a fourth, you're going to be playing this, but here. So think of this as a bar. When you get to the B string, move here. Think of this as your Tetris line, which is two, two, and then two. Two parts on the third fret, two parts on the second fret, two parts on the third fret. So now we have, and then we can go up to the next shape from lesson one and go down. So you see how we can, we have access to these notes. And let's say the progression changes to E. Have your nice comfy spot right here, and then you can apply these moves. You have E, position with the with 
that here on the 12th fret, and then your E, instead of looking at this shape in A minor, you go to E here on your 5th string at the 7th fret, on your A string at the 7th fret, that's an E, you hear, and then that same shape, get to your B, That shape becomes your movable minor shape as long as you know where that root is on the A string or if you can find it here on the G string. If you know you're kind of solo in an E and you slide down to the E here, you have a new locational point. And you have, you know, if you're familiar with your cage shapes, there's your E minor right here. That's your D minor shape, but in the E minor position. And these shapes just start to fall under your fingers. Your G minor shape, 12, 10, 9. See that? That has the Tetris piece in it. And the, the, the straight line. So your root, just like an A, slide down and run this new position now go to A and do that so these two shapes you slide into each other or you can slide into them by seeing this straight line and this tetris shape and their relationship. So the dissonance of running them together in fourths may not sound nice, but it can also kind of teach your fingers to see that. most musical exercise but definitely a memory thing and you can do it you can do all those kind of maneuver maneuvers double stops whatever it takes to kind of let you see the shape between the strings there's E here's an E and here's an E and so I know that that shape shape is going to be found right here you can take the same exercises that I showed you for hippopotamus and triplets and and more elephant and work that out with this shape that's going to be what your homework will be will be to put on a metronome <laughs> two bars and just keep playing that shape over and over again. Triplets would be elephant, 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 elephant. Phrase it to, to make it.
it sound proper, this, you can modify the shape so that you're not always playing every string within that hippopotamus shape. And you can just start on the, the Tetris side of this shape. I'll show you a real cool little trick. So. So that's broken down into five notes. If you think of the A as the pickup, that A is not really going to be the one. Think of that as the lead into the one. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So every one of those I'm starting after my A pickup. One. See, I'm starting that on the fifth. I'm on the fifth string, the A string at the third fret, and working up the scale that way with five notes, and you end on the A at the second fret of the G string. So there's five notes one, two, three, four, five, click one, two, three, four, five, click two, three, four, five, click two, three, four, five. So that's the same thing, just up an octave, twelve, fifteen. And then start with that 15, you start your click. One. So that would be 15 on the A, 12 4, and 12 4 on the D and G. And then start on 14 of the D. And then run the rest of the pattern 12, 14, 13, 15. See that B string shift? So. And then start on your root again at the 14th fret of the G string. So the whole thing. Sounds great going down if you get those five notes together. Two, three, four. So that's what you should be shooting for. You should shoot for trying to get that pattern broken down into a couple of comfortable spots and then work it out into phrasing, quarter notes, triplets, try some hippopotamuses if you can. And remember that when we go to looking at the fifth string roots, we're going to be looking at a real familiar shape because it has this straight line. But the hang up in learning this shape, I feel like for many people is realizing that this, this straight line has now just taken a small adjustment in going from the open string to the first fret. And it just becomes, it starts to become a point where your finger naturally will start to shift as you do these moves. <laughs> You see that? My finger shifts on the B string, and that becomes part of the muscle memory of learning these patterns. You learn the pattern, you learn it an octave up, and then learn it another octave up. You have to shift. So what did I just do there? Five, eight, five, seven, five, seven. On the E, starting on the E, start on the A, 12.15 to 12.14, 12.14. And then on the G string, 14 to 17. Same relationship, A to C. So that shift by moving your index finger. So you see how that pattern is the same as... But here we just go... And you 
can slide and then continue your patterns that way, or you slide that way and continue your patterns that way. Remember, you can only go up or down, and you can only pick up or down. So that be, kind of becomes freeing, as limiting as it sounds. You start to say, oh, okay, well, I'm going to pick down when I'm doing this, and I'm going to pick up when I'm doing this. I'm going up the string, or I'm going down the string. And that starts to become this muscle memory coordination between your hands and the shapes. So remembering the G to B tuning situation and that shift and learning this essential minor third step and then going up a string and doing a whole step, up a string again and doing a whole step, you're landing on a root. starts to move you out of this box that just plants so many of us guitarists here because we just become a little afraid of exploring uh, what is a built-in rule and once that rule becomes muscle memory it becomes a habit and then you start to actually add on to the notes we'll move from pentatonics to the seven notes again. I'll go through the phone number stuff. I talked about it in that one video. Maybe I'll pop it right here. Maybe I'll forget by the time I edit this. But I, I hope that this has gotten you somewhere. Um, I'm going to move on to the next lesson, uh, which we'll, we'll keep moving this way. We'll, we're going to have to pick up from here, though, because we've run out of space. We can't make any more notes here. So our next lesson, we'll take this snake shape, and it's going to add is something that is identical to it, okay? And you will, if you know all of your shapes, you probably know just what I'm talking about, but there's a relationship between all of these straight lines that kind of lets you keep moving in either direction once you see those patterns. So anyway, I hope that this has been a, a helpful lesson for you. Again, I'm, I'm getting a little deeper. I'm trying to go deep. Go back and watch some of the other lessons, but I'm trying to not get too into theory because I want shapes and muscle memory to be what this part of these lessons are all about. You can explore all sorts of melodies with these shapes. These are standards, not just for guitarists, but for almost every musician, horn players, pianists. They all have their foundations in triads, pentatonics, and seven note or more uh, scales. So it's a great way to just kind of start stripping away things and learning stuff. Oh, thanks for coming back, Luca. Anyway, uh, like, subscribe, share, um, and really thank you. I got a lot of letters um, on Facebook after that last uh, lesson um, of people asking questions, people kind of exploring this, and I really hope that I'm opening some doors for you. I appreciate all the kind words I got. Um, if you are friends with me on Facebook, David Dowling, um, I don't have a double D guitar page there, uh, strictly YouTube. So find me there on Facebook, send me messages. That's probably the easiest way to get a hold of me. If you have any questions, please feel free. Uh, thanks again for tuning in. Take care.